Okay, so um, let's have our notion of free body diagrams. As a review, let's have our free body diagrams. Rito. But the point here is you have a free body diagram, you sketch an object uh, as a point and then draw the forces acting on it. Kakailangan ulit natin yan sa ating discussion for this session. Again, uh, what we only have, this is, we just add forces, we describe these forces and then do the same technique, same strategy. Ganun pa rin yung gagawin natin. And again, paulit-ulit-ulit na tayo dito, MA vector is not a force, hence dapat hindi yan lalabas sa free body diagram. Okay, pag merong problem sa exam, tapos sinagot nyo pa rin yan, ewan ko na lang ha. <laughs> so yeah, so for example, if A is not, um, if, uh, if the acceleration is zero, that is the particle is uh, is at rest or moving uh, with constant velocity, then um, the free body diagram looks like this, and of course, hindi mo naman kailangan mag-set ng acceleration dyan. However, if the acceleration is non-zero, that is, of course, the particle is accelerating, then the net sum of all forces is non-zero, and therefore, you can arbitrarily set a uh, particular uh, direction of acceleration. Now, we will see that the direction of the acceleration that's assumed in the problem will be important in, uh, in determining the direction of the, of the frictional force, as you will see in this lecture. Okay, in the examples that I will be solving in this lecture. Now, so again, we can draw an acceleration vector at the side of the free body diagrams. Wag mong ikakabit sa free body diagram in Okay, questions sa, sa atin dito? Wala namang problema dito. Uh, no questions? No problem? Got? Okay, okay. So, what is friction? So, frictional force is another type of force that, again, we have contact and non-contact forces. Frictional force is a contact force. And it is experienced by a body when, uh, when uh, it is at rest or with, when it slides on a surface. Siyempre, kapag nakahang yan, unless may surface yan, <laughs> uh, may frictional force pag may surface. Pag nakahang lang, hindi siyempre wala, di ba? Now, of course, um, from the in the previous discussions, we are assuming all that all the our surfaces are frictionless, so f equals zero there. However, um, in reality, it's, it doesn't happen. Uh, even that, uh, even the uh, smoothest surfaces uh, have some very small friction frictional forces there. So ideal um, situation, na, na walang friction force. However, the problem with friction is that it's completely uh, it's not yet completely understood. It's not. It's a complex phenomena, and then wala pa talagang so, sobrang um, uh, principles na nandito na nakabase sa, first, uh, sa tinatawag na first principles. Wala pang ganon. All of our ideas that we will be dealing with this topic are based on experiments. So phenomenological lahat yan. So yun. Again, it acts parallel to the surface. Unlike normal force, which acts perpendicular to the surface, frictional force acts parallel to the surface. And it's perpendicular, obviously, to the normal force N because uh, perpendicular to N sa surface, and therefore, yung F ay dapat perpendicular to the normal force. And hence, this is important. It opposes the tendency of, of an object's motion. Mali yung sasabihin, it opposes the motion. No, wala yung word the tendency. Important yung word the tendency, John. Why? Okay, let me explain that. Halimbawa, um, masa ko, nasa ano ka, nasa jeep ka. Tapos, syempre yung jeep, gumugulong yan. May, may, may gulong. Tapos, syempre, go, may gulong yan, di ba? Tapos, bigang promeno yung driver. Pag promeno yung driver, nasa anong direction ng frictional force? So, Aharap palikod. Do? Anong direction ng frictional force ba? Di ba? So yun. Ang point ko ay hindi necessarily na yung object's motion ay nasa opposite ng direction ng friction. If the particle is, uh, for example, decelerating, then the direction of the acceleration and velocity vectors are not the same. However, the direction of the frictional force and the velocity vector are the same. Kasi ang, ang, ang gusto mong sabihin dito is that it should point to opposite the direction of A. This is very important. Okay? It should point opposite the direction of A. By convention, kung saan yung direction ng A mo, ang direction ng frictional force mo ay opposite mo. Ganun siya sineset. Ganun siya sineset. So, yun. And um, uh, it was found out that uh, frictional forces are electromagnetic interactions. So, so uh, in that case, there's some addition or cohesion happening between the surfaces of two objects. And hence, uh, they, uh, there's a 
since there's an interaction, there should be a force that's uh, that's connecting these two surfaces, and then you have friction. Again, balikan ko lang tong previous point. It opposes the tendency of an object to move. That necessarily the object's motion. Kasi pwede na same yung direction ng velocity ng object sa frictional force ng object na yun. Especially when the object is decelerating. Okay? Clear ba tayo dito? Clear ba tayo dito? Yes. I hope this is clear. Okay. Now, there are two types of frictional forces. So, the first one is static friction, Fx. Um, and the second one is kinetic friction, Fk. So, uh, uh, in other books, meron pa silang tinatawag na rolling friction, but uh, we will not uh, consider rolling friction in this course. So, okay. Just for you to know, may rolling friction na tinatawag. Okay, the first one is static friction. Okay, have you experienced this? Halimbawa yung mabigat na object and you want to push it. Uh, ano napapansin nyo? Diba parang at start, ang hirap yung tulakin. Na-experience nyo ba yun? Especially sa mga guys na pinagtutulak ng kanilang, uh, pinagtutulak ng box ng kanilang fam. Halimbawa, kung meron mabigat na object dyan. Usually kayo yung isan eh. Not, uh, pwede rin naman babae, of course. Depende. But the point here is, uh, kapag nag-start ka ng object, di ba? Di, di ba, ang hirap pa simulang paggalawin ng isang mabigat na object. It's because the static friction there increases with increasing applied force. So, so yun. So, uh, again, static friction, obviously static guy. Eh. Pag hindi walang relative motion, that is, if the object doesn't move relative to the surface, then the frictional force that's acting on the object is static in nature. And now, um, the static friction is dependent on uh, on the applied force on, on a given object. Kasi, uh, ang gagawin ni static friction, kapag mas, mas malaki yung force na, na in-apply mo dun sa object na yun, the tendency of the static force is to increase its, its friction so that hindi gagalaw yung object. And then, there will be a time, uh, a critical uh, applied force that will make the object move. Yun yung, yun, yung, yun yung tinatawag the maximum magnitude ng static friction, which is actually dependent on the normal force N. So kapag mas malaking surface, since in that case, mas maraming surfaces na nagko-connect, doon nakadepende yung normal force, and therefore the frictional force is dependent on the normal force experimentally. So hence, we see here that there we have an inequality. The static frictional force is less than or equal to the product of some coefficient, mu s, and uh, times the normal force exerted by a body. So mu s here is known as the coefficient of static friction. Okay? Again, static friction need not to be equal to mu s n. Yung mu s n ay maximum quantity lang ng static friction. Clear ba tayo dito? Clear ba tayo dito? Yes, sir. I hope this is clear. Okay. Now, what about kinetic friction? So, sorry for that. Di pala. So, uh, uh, obviously, Fs ranges from 0 to mu s n. Okay. So what about kinetic friction? Ito na talaga. What about kinetic friction? So kinetic friction, so after some time, pag natulak mo na ng enough force, what will happen is gagalaw yung object. And pag gumalaw yung object, mas madali na siyang patuloy yung paggalawin. ba? I hope you experienced that para medyo may sense ng sinasabi ko rito. Uh, at the start, mahirap paggalawin, pero after some time, biglang bibilis yung paggalaw niya. Or once na gumalaw siya, mas madali na tulakin. So in that case, uh, broken na yung static friction. Wala nang static friction dyan. And kinetic friction na yung nag-act. So kinetic friction acts when a body slides over, over a surface as the object is moving. So in that case, its magnitude increases when the normal force increases. So here, um, as long if n is constant or the normal force exerted on the body is constant, the kinetic friction is also constant. Regardless kung magkano kalaki yung force na ina-apply mo. Okay? So yun. So here, instead of having an inequality, equation 13.2 is actually an equation um, um, relating the kinetic friction and the normal force. And the proportionality constant of the, of the kinetic friction is your coefficient of kinetic friction in K. Okay? Questions? Uh, usually, mas gamit ko ang mu k kaysa mu s kasi medyo mas may complications ang mu s. But we will solve problems with static friction in this, in this topic. Questions? Uh, may tanong ba rito? Are there any questions? May tanong? No, sir. Ah, okay. Sige. So again, more slippery surface means smaller mu k. Siyempre, pag mas madulas ang, ang surface, mas mabilis, uh, mas mag skin Or so, uh, mas maliit yung friction and therefore mas dudulas yung isang object. Okay. Now, so, uh, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Siyempre, pag walang uh, in-apply na force dun sa isang object at rest, siyempre walang frictional force. 
walang static friction at wala ring static friction. Now, let's say, uh, um, so yan, let's say what will happen is I, I pull this, um, this string here that, and it's connected with some box, with this box here. So what happens is, uh, uh, sa una, the tension uh, will be counteracted by the frictional force and hence this will cancel, these two forces will cancel out, giving us an object still at rest. And so even though na hinila mo na siya, hindi pa rin, uh, hindi pa rin gagalaw yung object. So in that case, if a weak applied force is, uh, is, a, uh, is applied or acted upon the, acted on a, on a body, the box will remain at rest because the static friction there, in that case the static friction, is still less than the mu SN, which is the critical point at, at, at after, after that gagalaw ng object. So yan, try ko mula, pag dinakayan ko yung forces, lalaki rin yung frictional force until such time na gagalaw yung object. So stronger applied force, box just about to slide. In that case, the, the value of the static friction is now proportional to the normal force. And after that, the object will start moving and the static force or static friction mawawala na ang matitira na lang ay kinetic friction. So if you start, if the box slides at constant speed, even constant speed, kinetic friction na yan. So the kinetic friction will now act. Hence, we expect here, kasi mas, um, uh, in general, mu s is always greater than p. Kasi ang nangyayari, um, mas malaki yung force sa kailangan mong ilagay para paggalawin yung isang object compared sa para ituloy yung motion ng object. Okay? Nakuha yun. Hence, mu s here, the coefficient of static friction is greater than mu k, the coefficient of kinetic friction. Questions? May tanong? May tanong dito? Wala. Okay. Now here's a diagram showing the 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 um the applied force as a function or that is the tension as a uh, the frictional force as a function of tension. So as I said, uh after some time, eh, di mag increase muna in frictional force as a function of tension, static friction yan, until it reaches the critical point, which is um so yeah, but which is uh, in that case, the static friction is proportional to the normal force. After that, gagalaw ng object with constant velocity, and hence um, it will reach you. It will reach this point wherein the kinetic friction is proportional to the normal force. Okay. Questions? May tanong barito? Are there any questions? May tanong? Nancy. 